So we've been looking at uh, hindrances um, for the husband and wife to become a team. Uh, we've been also looking at um, what will really enable the husband and wife to become a good team. So we've been looking at some things. And uh, uh, any uh, questions so far? Any um, you know, challenging situations maybe? See, one, one thing that I could think of was, uh, you know, what if one person is willing and the other one is unwilling? Right? That is always the case, right? Uh, oh, I mean, not always the case, but that, that could be a possibility, real possibility where one person is, um, you know, willing to work as a team and the other one is not. Um, and it, it, it could also happen in certain scenarios. One is willing, there are certain scenarios, the other one is unwilling. So it could happen. Uh, so the thing is, uh, you know, for both the husband and the wife to have the understanding that we are one team, it also you know helps in the next chapter is about uh, resolving conflicts it also helps uh, you know in that to to know that we are uh, on the same side of the table right we are not opposing each other we are in the same team we are working towards uh, the same uh, goals right so to have that understanding and that's why amos 3 and verse 3 talks about how you know can um, two people work together walk together unless they are in agreement so these are many things that uh, you know the couple has to come in agreement right so um well sometimes people do it through trial and error and you know they mm, reach a stage we're saying okay this is working and this is not working and we need to you know we need to be uh, in an agreement now we have so many resources right so many resources so many ministries and when we look into the word of god we see so much of wisdom uh, the blueprint for marriage, um, the instructions. So it's um, it's best that we put that to practice, right? And uh, you know, if somebody is single, to come to that place of agreement, right? Saying that okay, this is something that I need to put in practice in my life. Is if somebody is married, um, to see where the gaps are, you know, where things have. Um, things are missing and and and, and as um, you know as as you understand okay these are things that are not actually happening so these are things that we need to you know come in agreement with uh come in agreement to um and then you know make that change right so um so you know uh, a wonderful resource for a married couple um would be the the marriage course you know apart from all these resources that are already there on marriage uh, you know on the website church website which the, the husband and wife can actually watch together and follow through and try to do these uh, you know exercises which we have in the notes together uh, that would be a wonderful way uh, another resource which we uh, which is there um, out there is uh, something called the alpha you know the the marriage course I think it's called the Marriage Course by Alpha Ministries, which is also a great uh, resource. Where it's, um, I think the, they used to have this DVD. Uh, I, I don't know if it's uh, online. I'm sure it must be. So there's something for you know. You, you can do it as couples, like two, three couples together, and um, married couples together, and then you know one couple facilitates that. Uh, facilitates the discussion and then <clears throat> you know you do it uh, you go through those um, go through the that content uh, together and it can be a very rewarding um, you know very enriching empowering uh, time right um, uh, it can be a time of um, healing it can be a time of uh, well all, all those things coming to the surface you know uh, well things have been pushed down um, neglected and and so it can be a, it can be a difficult thing in the sense you know when all that is brought out things that have not been said not been spoken not been discussed so that can be a difficult thing so it's it's good to you know do it um with with someone else so you can get to hear their perspective and be objective right, about this it's a good thing right um so just want to encourage uh, those of you who are married, you know, you can always do this. Um, the Alpha or, you know, the the, the, the series on Christian uh, marriage and family, which is there on our website, right? Okay. So, yeah. So, any questions that you might have? Um, 
any questions at all anything that you might want to share um Okay, so let's uh, let's move on. Um, so we looked at you know these attitudes that uh, two big big ones, right? The attitude that we need to have um, even as we work towards um, becoming a team, you know. And these attitudes really work, um, you know, work in the sense of these attitudes might um, work against some traditional views, okay, certain cultures. Um, it uh, it would actually break those traditions, break those uh, well uh, customs, maybe, um, and it will really question question some of the things that you know we've been doing. So uh, yeah, but it's it's from the word, so it's good to you know focus on it and to take a look at it, right? Um, but I, I I think the PowerPoint may not have the slide. Um, yeah it's okay so let me just uh, put the scriptures here okay so uh, the first thing that we are going to look at is uh, the servant heart okay and the servant heart uh, which the lord jesus uh, spoke about servant leadership servant heart so let's uh, look at that servant heart and uh, we're looking at matthew chapter 20 and uh, verses 25 to 28 matthew 20 Verses 25 to 28. Okay, so let's um, let's look at that scripture. Okay, Matthew 20 and verse 25. Uh, uh, you know, the, the whole context is um, uh, sons of Zebedee and the mother who comes and asks uh, you know, that her sons actually sit on the left and the right of the Lord Jesus in in his kingdom. Okay, so, um, so the Lord um, responds to that and, uh, and the other disciples are very, very angry. Uh, they are displeased. It says, verse 24, and when the 10 heard it, they were greatly displeased with the two brothers. You know, how can you really do this? Um, so then the Lord Jesus gives uh, um, an instruction and uh, also declares a very important truth. So he says, uh, Jesus called them to himself and said, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them. And those who are great exercise authority over them. Yet it shall not be so among you. But whoever desires to become great among you, let him be your servant. And whoever desires to be first among you, let him be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Okay, so, um, so the, uh, the whole act, or the act and and the heart attitude of serving and to have the attitude of a servant. The Message Bible, it says, uh, so Jesus got them together to settle things down. He said, you've observed how godless rulers throw their weight around, how quickly a little power goes to their heads. It is not going to be that way with you. Whoever wants to be great must become a servant. Whoever wants to be first among you must be your slave. Now that is what the Son of Man has done. He came to serve, not be served, and then to give away his life in exchange for the many who are held hostage. So you see that he came to serve the Lord of heaven and earth, uh, the creator the, who brought things into existence, um, who was there in the eternal past, stepped into time, and out of his great love, his heart is to serve. And, and he says so himself. He says, the Son of Man came to serve and not to be served. Uh, the Son of Man came to give his life in exchange for the many who are held hostage. So that was his thing, to give his life. You know, these are these are people who are 
who, who might respond, who might not respond, uh, who might accept, who might not, who might receive, who might not receive. Uh, but I'm going to do it anyway. Right. I'm going to do the right thing. I'm going to do this thing uh, because this is what I came to do. Right. So, so many times, you know, to have a servant heart, uh, it's difficult because when you consider the other person to whom you want to be a servant. Okay. Now, it's easy to be humble before humble people, and it's extremely difficult to be humble before proud people. People who are proud, people who are uh, who are not responding mutually, you know, uh, who are not uh, maybe respecting, not even acknowledging your serving, and then it becomes a problem, right? And it, it's like, uh, you know, I want to see that in them. I want to see that uh, response in them. And then I can be a servant, right? So what if they are proud? What if they are brash and um, you know not really acknowledging your your serving it becomes so much more difficult right? but the lord's example is this that i came to serve and um, uh, it's it's not irrespective of how the response is going to be okay irrespective of whether it's going to be acknowledged irrespective of whether it's going to be uh, applauded Right, people saying, "Wow, that's a great sacrifice! Thank you so much for doing it." And well, uh, complimenting, and you know, if there's not, none of it, if it goes unnoticed sometimes, or maybe willfully, then it's so difficult, right, to have a servant heart. Then the flesh, you know, it rears up, and we're like, you know. How dare she or how dare he? You know, uh, and, uh, and I'm doing all this. I'm sacrificing all this. And I'm, you know, uh, I've done all this, <clears throat> and yet, you know, there's no, there's no acknowledgement. There's no simple thank you for all that I've done. Uh, and it's so difficult. It becomes so difficult, and we are so, you know, we are so angry. We're so upset. Not saying, okay, I'm not going to do it anymore, right? But, but this is what the Lord says. It's not when things are fine. Not only when things are fine. Not only when we are, you know, um, uh, we are applauded or uh, we are, uh, our efforts are uh, acknowledged. It's not only in those times, but it's, uh, it's in the difficult of times, right? Um, the Lord Jesus again says in uh, John chapter 13. Let me put the verse there, John 13, and uh, verses 14 and 15, right? Let's turn to John 13. Okay. Verse 14, um, if I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Okay. Uh, it's interesting, right? Verse 14. The Lord is saying, if I then, he's saying your Lord and teacher. Okay. So he's saying, okay, I remain your Lord. Okay, there's no change in that. I am your Lord, I am your teacher, there's no change in that status because I've done this. Okay, that's one thing that we see. Okay. Uh, and, and the Lord is saying, you know, if if me being the Lord and teacher, if I have done this for you, okay, right? Um, he says, ha, if if I have washed your feet, which was um, a very menial task to do, especially in that culture, in those times when everything was dusty and, uh, you know, the roads were dusty and people wore sandals and, you know, it was, it, it was, uh, it was a menial task. Uh, but he did it. So he took on the form of a servant, you know, he, he laid aside his garments, took a towel, girded himself, and he did this. So he says, uh, if I have done this to you, 
then you also ought to wash one another's feet okay so so um, so we see that the lord has set an example okay it's it's not uh, uh, well, it is the right thing to do. It is uh, irrespective of people's, uh, you know, uh, their response, whatever it is. Um, and over and above that, we see that the Lord Himself has set an example, a pattern. And He's saying, you know, if me being the Lord and teacher, if I can do this to you, you also need to do that. So, how much more? You know, if He's done it for His disciples and He's saying, okay, you do it for the others. Okay, so, we see that. Um, then, um, so we see that, okay, this servant heart is something that I, you know, as a husband, as a wife, I, I really need to have this Christ likeness, you know, it's, it's really going to come in handy in a marriage uh, situation. It's going to be a lifesaver. It's going to be a marriage saver. And when we bring that into, uh, the marriage relationship, uh, it's going to build the team. Right, uh, husband and wife to be the team. So, so imagine if both the husband and the wife have a servant heart, right? Saying, "I'm I'm here to serve you. Right? I'm here to honor. I'm going. I'm going to. Uh, I'm here to you know serve, right? And and that is what we want, right? That is what Scripture. Uh, the truth is, um, which is uh, which is going to be a beautiful, wonderful uh, design. That God has actually. You know, uh, created and 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 that is what he wants for the Christian home. And that is what the Lord wants between the spouse, um, between the husband and the wife. Okay, so we see something beautiful. So the husband, being the head, okay, you see the divine design. The husband being the head, being the the head, at the same time, is also the servant. So, so the leadership doesn't change. Like it's not a position to be flaunted. It's not a position to be, you know, it's not medal to be worn, a badge of honor saying, wow, and you know, I'm this and uh, kneel before me, you know, kind of thing. But it is something that we, uh, uh, you know, that's God's design. So we humbly receive it. And at the same time, we, you know, we follow, right? Okay, so let's look at the second one. So one first we saw was servant heart. Um, um, uh, just give me a minute. Sorry. Uh, uh, can you just give me a minute, please? Just one second. Sorry, sorry for the uh, interruption. Yeah, the second thing that we see is uh, mutual submission. Okay, mutual submission. So, you know, submission. When we think of submission, of course, uh, uh, we see that instruction, exhortation, wives be submitted to your own husbands, um, and we see that in Ephesians five. But we uh, let's let's go to Ephesians five. Uh, while that is true. And um, you know that is uh, a biblical instruction. Uh, we also looked at you know what submission is not. You know what uh, that it is. Um, it is not uh, uh, saying that okay. Uh, you know no matter what, not be used as a doormat, not losing your individuality. Uh, it's a submission. It's a it's a willing submission in response to loving leadership. Right. We we saw that. So we know that this is this is the right. Uh, thing to do, okay. but we also see that Ephesians five, uh, sorry, um, and verse twenty one. You know, even before uh, we read about the instruction to the wife to submit to the husband, we see in verse twenty one submitting to one another. Okay, um, you know, 
from verse 15 we say okay walk circumspectly redeeming the time do not under do not be unwise don't be drunk with wine uh, give thanks always for all things to God, etc. And then coming to that place, verse 21, submitting to one another in the fear of God. So this mutual submission is also going to help. It's only going to help in um, the husband and wife becoming the uh, becoming a team, you know, a force to reckon with, right? becoming a team, and uh, really, literally, you know, um, uh, making the home a place of um, a place of heaven on earth. Right? So mutual submission. So you're submitted to one another. It is not just um, uh, just leaving. Uh, it's not just just one person submitting the other person. Uh, you know, not submitting to the other. No, we're submitting to one another. Why and how? Because of our reverent fear of God. Okay. So um, well. And this is, this is something that I think we, irrespective of what tradition, what customs, what culture, you know, this truth transcends all that, right? Um, they turn the truth of God's word. So, so irrespective of all that, you know, which might, which, which might really, you know, hit at some of those things that we um, follow. You know, I, I think I, I've shared that. Uh, I remember getting, um, you know, um, just got married, okay, from the church. Um, just went home. Uh, we didn't change or anything, you know. Just went home and uh, had some refreshments. And home was about five minutes away, so went home, had some refreshments, and went back to the the wedding reception. Okay, just in the same menu, and just just outside the church. Um, uh, so, so in between that, you know, I'm just coming here and then. Uh, going and then I, I you know I, I don't know if I shared with you all, but then uh, uh, a cousin of mine, I know senior to me, so he's saying that uh, you know you know Jake, you need to be you know you know you know Jake, you need to be you know you need to take charge, right? Yeah, just don't give in. You need to take charge. You need to show who's the boss. <laughs> um, you know that you're a you're a soft spoken guy, so you need to show who's the boss in this, and. Uh, and thank God, you know, thank God for the uh, marriage preparation that I had, uh, you know, gone through, looked at the word of God and all that. So, so uh, I just, I just smiled and, you know, nodded my head and this, you know, just, you know, just went my way. But, but the fact is this, you know, that that's, that's the popular thing, you know, that's the popular uh, message that's going around. You need to take charge. You need to be sure who's the boss, you know, uh, you know, you need to call the shots. Well, it's in direct contradiction to what the Lord Jesus wants. Right? So, well, your leadership doesn't change. Your position, husband for the position, you know, the divine placement, the divine order, that doesn't change. Uh, but he's saying you be submitted to one another in the, in, in the sense that, uh, you know, there are times when, um, you know, there are times, yes, the, the wife will... Uh, ultimately, you know, be submitted to the, you know, the leadership of the husband. But it's a loving leadership, so there is a discussion. It's it's not like a, you know a, a, a non autocratic voice. It's not just a one thing that that says, okay, husband has said it, and that's it. No more, no more questions, no more discussions. No, it's not that, right? Ultimately, giving. So that's the thing, you know, after all these space for discussion and everything, ultimately yielding to, okay, let's go with this. Let's go with leadership of the husband. So that's that's the picture. And it's beautiful if every married couple in every home, you know, can walk in this truth, right? Okay, so mutual submission. So these two are big, big things. Right, so, and as people preparing to get married, um, it will really, it will really empower us. You know, it's not a place of uh, weakness you know, to have a servant heart. It's not a place of weakness to be mutually submissive to one another. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful thing. And uh, since it's God's design, it's wonderful. It is good. Uh, and the designer of marriage has designed so that. It will work. It will work well. You know, if carried out, it will work well. If uh, obeyed, it will work well. Um, and this is how God designed. 
okay so um so that's the heart attitude uh, for the husband and the wife becoming a team okay so the next thing that we see is um, exciting uh, you know exciting <laughs> thing sorry that we see is that well it is not just a team in you know household chores or responsibilities but uh, becoming a kingdom team okay so what does that mean which means that okay your boy your life is uh, or your marriage is is way beyond the the ordinary you know day-to-day -day things uh, okay we got married we uh, we're doing life together we have children and then we you know we get them educated and okay we have family all you know all that is beautiful wonderful it's part of it but there's something that goes beyond that okay which is uh, the fact that god has uh, you know has this in store that uh, the husband and wife are a team for the purposes of the kingdom okay so when we're thinking of uh, becoming a team we're also thinking of this aspect for the purposes of the kingdom uh, for the purposes of and the plans and the dreams that the king has okay so so that's the you know the more exciting part right that's the that's a bigger picture um, and uh, that really enhances our vision of our enhances the purpose of marriage right it gives so much meaning so much purpose um you know uh, for the marriage or mar uh, marriage relationship right so let's look at uh, a few things here um okay so there is a bigger purpose there's a you know, I, I, i'll just put the verses here so there's a bigger purpose then the purpose is that that we fulfill the plans fulfill the the dreams that the king has for us in touching the lives of many in touching the you know in 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 really the way the purpose for which he has commissioned us you know in genesis chapter 1 verse 28 the lord jesus i mean god really uh, commissioned um, adam and eve said go be fruitful multiply replenish uh, subdue have dominion over the earth okay um, so that is true and we also saw in first peter 3 and verse 7 that the husband and the wife are joint heirs of the kingdom okay joint heirs um, which means that you know uh, as heirs to receive uh, our uh, inheritance as heirs to fulfill the calling okay so uh, first peter 3 and it's verse um, sorry first peter 3 and verse 7 right as being heirs together of the grace of life so in giving the instruction dwelling with understanding and honor is bringing out this very important truth that because you are actually heirs together of this grace of life so so the thing is for us to okay uh, so far maybe you know we you discovered you pursued god and you seeked um, you know his will to find out god what is my you know what is my purpose what do, what are my plans what is my calling okay individual call well and and maybe you're you know walking in it or you have to discover it and you know we're all in different stages right maybe stepping into the fullness of it but the fact is to uh, first thing is to discover the individual call and uh, and then also to blend okay you have this call it's unique you have this purpose you have these giftings you have been anointed for this now i have this this is my call this is um you know god has called me for this now how can i how can we work together for the purposes of the kingdom you know how can we bring these together for the purposes of the kingdom so that's what a team does right? you know so whatever the team um, the strengths the individual strengths of the team members enhances the collective strength of the team if you look at it there's edification there is uh, 
you know, everything that is comfort. So each part, you know, when we look at 1 Corinthians 12 and also Romans chapter 12 and uh, so Ephesians 4, you see that, okay, each part does its share, right? Um, and to give strength and to receive strength. Okay, and that's why we are a body. So the same thing would apply for uh, the husband and wife with the call, with the with the gifting, right? And not just ministering to each other, but also collectively together to minister for the uh, sake of the kingdom. Okay, so to talk about that, okay, so it it it's um, uh, so this you know we need to understand that well. The calling need not be the same in the sense the way the person is gifted um, will need not be uh, the same. Okay, one person is gifted, maybe in um, you know in highly visible ministry, pulpit, maybe he's talking to people, spiritual ministry. Well, maybe the other person is is not like that. You know, maybe, maybe the that person's gifting is something else. Maybe it's helps and administrations. Uh, maybe it is uh, something else altogether. Okay, maybe it's compassion. Right? Maybe it's giving. Right? We see right? a mix of all that. So, if that is the case, then there, there's no question of comparison. There's no question of saying, okay, one is better than the other. And again, there's no question of this. These differences causing conflict or division or competition okay so conflict competition division uh, should not come as a result of the different giftings you know which is what paul writes right in 1 corinthians 12 and 13 and 14 he says okay you know these these are different gifts but the same spirit same god same holy spirit different kinds of ministries the same lord okay Different kinds of uh, you know, functions, but at the same Holy Spirit. So uh, let it be for the edification of the church. Right? So therefore, in a in a uh, in a marriage relationship, you, there's no you know there's no question of saying, okay, why can't you be like me? Why can't you do this? Well, the person maybe they are so uniquely gifted to do you know in that space in that realm of influence. So acknowledge that, right? Recognize that. Okay, it's another thing to encourage them to step out and to discover the giftings. Okay, this one, that's that's a different thing. Okay, maybe that person is, uh, you know, just still growing in maturity, and uh, maybe they have not discovered certain things, gifts and callings, and all that. And and maybe as a, you know, a, as a fellow believer, and uh, you know, maybe as a mature believer, you helping them to discover encouraging them to discover that's that's a different thing okay but uh, well if a person says okay this is what i'm you know this is i this is my strength this is my call this is my gifting and i want to pursue this right so there's no question of comparison competition conflict or division because of that right okay so um there needs to be support they need to be encouragement mutually, okay. And it can really uh, free the person to be who they want to be, okay. Um, uh, really, I, I'm just looking at my own life and how um, um, you know my wife has uh, really helped in this area, like where she said, "Yeah, this is this is who God has called you to be. So just go for it." Go all out, you know. Whether it's um, you know those days, I'm just talking about you know where we were so hungry and we just used to go for you know several meetings and just you know searching for the right church and searching for the right place to be planted in and and uh, it was always complete freedom. You know when it came to ministry, when it came to you know doing things, she was always encouraging and she is always encouraging, saying you know just go do it. You know this is what God has called. Go do it. Uh, I'll take care of things here. You know I'll. I take care of things, uh, uh, whatever needs to be done. Otherwise, home. Otherwise, you know, don't worry. Need to go, just go. So that gives so much of freedom. And so much of freedom, and uh, so we're able to pursue it. Saying, "Okay, God, I just want to thank you. Uh, thank you for this. Uh, you know, thank you for this spouse, and thank you for, um, you know, for all that you've uh, put in her." And I'm just grateful to God for this, right? So, um, so there's there needs to be support and encouragement uh, for each other, and to understand that 
you know personally individually and also as a as you know collectively as a couple um we are living um life in seasons right so there could be a season where maybe um i'm just looking at my own life you know like there will be we have a daughter and she was just um at that stage where she needed a lot of care and support and um uh, you know so we well did we do a lot of things uh, in, in terms of ministry um yeah, to some extent whatever we could right uh, but we need, just needed to understand that yes you know this is a season uh, i was working and my wife was not uh, working as in working as in um, you know in an office kind of a setting of course from home she was um so just to understand that yes you know these are these are the this is the call of god uh this is these are the gifts that god has put in me these are the abilities that i have but i'm in this season of life where right now i'm not able to step out and you know be all that um the responsibilities that god has given me right now uh, are kind of different okay i need to be a mother i need to be a you know make sure there's some nurturing and and all that happens and but there will come a time then i can step out okay so you are so as a couple you understand that right as husband and wife you understand that saying okay it's it's a season it's got a time frame it's there's a there's a starting point and end point of the season there's a transition into another season yet another season right so um, so let's get ready for that let's but we let's live this season um, content uh, happy you know joyful um let's not complain oh things used to be so good and now you know this things are very restrictive uh not able to do i don't have freedom no it's a season right uh, we may not be able to do everything that we that we used to do when we were single you know that's another thing right uh some people say you know this marriage is a problem <laughs> right I, when i was single i used to you know I, i used to go there do that i i could do this i could pray for so many hours you know i could at the drop of a hat i could just leave i could travel i yeah absolutely but now it's a, it's a change in season you know the the same god who you know took you through that season is taking you through this season i acknowledge that i understand that that the season too will come to a transition and there will be another season and so uh walk in step with the lord during that season right uh, acknowledge what the responsibilities are acknowledge the fact that this season will have its uh, you know it's it comes with its roles it comes with its responsibilities and you know, there are certain things that well that you that you won't be able to do there are certain things that you will be able to do right uh, so understand that right so um understand the seasons understand the transitions and uh, and you know don't impose on the other person you know for example one could be in a season of amazing spiritual growth you know, as a believer just growing learning well the other person maybe you know personally they are just going through some bereavement maybe uh, maybe they are you know in, in the season that they are it's it's not similar right so don't impose that don't say don't look down on that right uh, encourage and support one another through that season um, don't force the uh, you know the spouse to do the same thing that you are doing okay uh, that is not correct either right so celebrate support one another and god will bring the increase as god brings the increase you know support celebrate each other's growth uh, you know one very important thing that we need to understand is um, so not to live for the applause of people right um in the sense you know as a couple we're talking about kingdom right doing things for the sake of the kingdom doing things you know being a team for kingdom purpose so which means we're talking ministry um and there could be various ways that as as a husband and wife you're serving so you know typically when you're serving together as a ministry team people have expectations based on their understanding of what ministry is like people have expectations and i and i remember very clearly when i took over a responsibility as a pastor after 
you know, of, of a location after after a season of being there and then coming back. And then this this uh, senior person just came and spoke to me and said, you know, um, you know, I, I know that you minister and do all this, but, uh, you know, please uh, tell your wife to minister to, you know, uh, he had two daughters, and, uh, grown up daughters and uh, you know, to mentor them, to minister to them and, and all that. And then I, I just told I just told him this, you know, um, and I, thank you for the suggestion but uh, you know she has uh, a different call different gifting certainly you know she will be in touch etc but um, i just want to tell you that her her strengths and the way god has called her and things that god has called her to do uh, could be different you know is different so i just want to tell you about that but she will do all that uh, she needs to do you know uh, within that call you know, so, so he understood that. He said, "Oh yes, yes, I understand." So people have expectations, you know, in all sincerity, uh, well-meaning folks, but they have expectations. Okay, if it's uh, let's say you know pastoral team, you know, pastoral couple, they say they have their expectation. Okay, the pastor, then pastor's wife needs to be this. You know, I remember another you know, the place where I come from. Okay, if, if uh, the pastor's uh, serve, you know, the pastor of the church. Then the pastor's wife has to be in charge of the women's ministry. The pastor's wife has to be involved in, you know, Sunday school, children's church. Um, pastor's wife has to be has to serve on, you know, all these kind of expectations, right? Well, what if the pastor's wife is called for something else? To be an engineer, to be a software engineer, right? To be in the medical profession, to be, what if? So the traditional view is that, well, the, the, the pastor and the pastor's wife needs to do this. Not necessarily. And the traditional view is also that, okay, pastor's son you know, needs to take over. Pastor's son uh, needs to continue the ministry. Not necessarily, right? Um, so I remember, uh, again, you know, at, at funerals, well-meaning pastors, senior pastors, you know, coming and uh, let's say the pastor has, you know, has gone on to be with the Lord, and then the family's there, the son is there, and, and the well-meaning pastors would, you know, senior folks would come and say, you know, um, son, you now have to take on the mantle, you now have to continue what your where your father has left off, and and so on, right? Now, now that puts a lot of pressure, unnecessary. Uh, and at a time when they are emotionally, you know, down, uh, put unnecessary pressure on 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 the person, right? So, um, so the thing is this: you know, people's expectations are there. Um, well, the son could be called to do something else. The son could be called to business. The son could be called to doing something else altogether, not not just pastoral ministry, right? So, uh, understand that. You know, uh, well, if it's if it's pastoral ministry, great. But maybe the son is not called to take on and continue what the father has done, right? So many things. So, so God will speak. God will God will lead, and God will enable the person to do what they need to do. And uh, so you just need to pray and leave it at that, right? So uh, while all these expectations are there, so you as a couple, as a ministry couple, need to be aware that yeah, people have expectations. But what is it that God has called us? What is it that God has called you? Right. Um, so that supersedes all of people's expectations and emotional pressures, and and, and especially with the kids, you know. Poor kids, what you know? Is, okay, pastors' kids need to be like this. No, they are just normal kids. They are growing up. They they have, you know, they are mischievous. They will have, you know, uh, they, they will be. They will break some rules. They will be punished. All that. They'll go through their normal childhood. You know, they 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 cannot be angels or, you know, overnight just because they are pastors' kids, right? So so the, those things. So be at peace, right? Especially when you're serving as well and wife, as a you know, uh, in the kingdom, God has called uh, you know, as uh, it is true that God uses those individual calls and individual gifting and blends that together as, to be a unique force for the kingdom of God. Well, it's, it's awesome, just go with it 
uh, do it, but keep this in mind, right? Okay, uh, a couple of things, right? Um, so being a kingdom couple and uh, like working for kingdom purposes um, has some of the challenges. Challenges would be balancing priorities, having, in other words, work-life balance. Okay, so as a husband and wife, if both are involved in ministry, if you're you know doing uh, you know the purpose of the kingdom, well, amazing, awesome, but also know what the priorities are. Also know that there is a family. Also know that you are parents. Also you know understand that yes, uh, we need to balance this. Marriage cannot be neglected. Parenting cannot be neglected. You know for the sake of kingdom purposes, because the king who created and placed us in, in this marriage and play, orchestrated this marriage, placed us in the family, is the same king who's calling us uh, to work together. So so we, we, we better steward well all that he's placed in our hands, right? Not just the call, but everything that he's placed in our hands. Um, and uh, be mindful of that, right? Uh, okay, as parents, you know, are we spending time with the kids? As husband and wife, are we spending time with each other? Or are we just going to this meeting and the other, or the speaking assignment and the other? Right? Are we intentionally uh, making time for each other? Right. So the uh, you know taking time for the family, taking time out as a cup as a couple, as a family, to spend time together, maybe a vacation, maybe a you know, day out. One doesn't have to feel guilty about it, right? Uh, knowing fully well that, okay, this is our God, this is our Heavenly Father, and uh, we need to steward it well. And it requires time, you know, like we studied, communication, being intentional about it, you know, it requires time, it takes time, it, it, it takes trust, you're building trust, and one needs to be transparent. So all this, you know, it, it involves time. So it cannot happen automatically. So... And we just have 24 hours in a day, right? So we need to prioritize um, time for um, ministry, for family, for marriage, and so on. Okay. So um, uh, just a couple of other things. Yes, uh, one of the things that in agreement that a couple can do is to pray together. Bringing it brings a sense of togetherness. It breaks down all those differences. Uh, it breaks down, you know. Uh, all the uh, attacks of the enemy, um, you know, when we're praying together, there is that oneness. Um, and and from the place of oneness, when we pray, uh, we see that our prayers are unhindered, right? So, and also in, um, lastly, in also bringing up children, uh, know that as a kingdom couple, as a couple, uh, uh, Bringing up children is also our responsibility. It's not someone else's responsibility. It's not their house help. It's not that uncle, that auntie, that you know, the in-laws, or uh, sometimes that happens, right? Okay, uh, now we have you know children. Now you take care. You know. No, uh, it is our responsibility. And uh, a lot of times, um, there's a lot of uh, you know kids feel that, right? Uh, um, and uh, there's the deep wounds when as parents, we don't spend enough time with kids, right? And after many years as adults, kids say, you know, my father was just like a Santa Claus. I used to see him at Christmas time. He was away from home all the time. Uh, yeah, he brought gifts, but uh, he wasn't there when I needed him the most, right? People still say, uh, after all those years, you know, in their 20s, in their 30s, in their 40s even, uh, people still carry that. I wanted that counsel, and uh, I was searching, and he wasn't there, right? So, um, so that's the thing. So, as parents, we can provide the best for our kids, and, the, and one of the things that we can provide is to be there, is to be there, you know, to take uh, our parenting uh, a God-given as a God-given privilege, and to and to steward that well. Okay, so we'll stop here. So we looked at teamwork and how uh, to become a team and uh, dealing with some of those hindrances and also becoming a team for the purposes of the kingdom, which is the 
you know exciting the bigger picture uh, of uh, of marriage even ministering together husband and wife right okay so we'll stop here and the next class we'll uh, continue okay next class is a it's it's about conflict uh, i think somebody asked about conflict and they said hold on i think i don't know if it was anita or someone so um, yeah so we're going to look at conflict and uh, you know how to deal with it um, the fact that conflicts happen um, one cannot escape but uh, there's a way of dealing with conflicts okay so we'll stop here and then uh, we'll meet in the next class thank you god bless bye bye